One question you probably haven't thought about much is, can Earth's orbit change? We think about Earth's orbit, the solar system in general, and it seems fairly stable. And in fact, currently, the solar system, we can consider it to be dynamically stable. We don't expect the planets to change their orbits, including the Earth, and long-term stability is expected for the solar system. That's kind of what we think. So this is just to show you these orbits are likely going to stay as they are in the grand scheme of things. What do we mean by dynamically stable currently going forward? Well, it means that the planets are likely going to be on the same orbits they are now when the sun evolves into a red giant. So the end of the solar system or the, the end of the sun is going to start to be signalled when the sun goes into a red giant. It comes to the end of its life, it's going to swell up. And that happens in about 8 billion years time. And we expect that the planets are going to be on the same orbits that they are now pretty much. There are a, a few very rare cases where some, some unusual dynamics might occur, where there could be some changes, but generally speaking, we're expecting that the, all the planets to be on the same orbits as they are now in 8 billion years time, which is a long time, so nothing really to worry about there. However, early on in the solar system, that wasn't the case. So as the planets were forming, the outer planets would have formed further out, they were expected to migrate inwards. There was actually resonances between the planets. When we say resonances, we mean that the time it takes for one planet to go round the sun is some ratio of another one. So, for example, you've got Jupiter and Saturn there. Jupiter would go round the sun three times for every two times that Saturn went round, which is what we refer to as an orbital resonance. Now, they kind of migrated inwards in that resonance, resonance kind of chain. Um, but the problem there is it required a fifth ice giant, which was in a resonance at the back end of that, which then got ejected early on. So in the early parts of the solar system, the orbits of the planets were wandering around. It's now kind of settled down and it's thought to be reasonably stable. But early on, that wasn't the case. So something that is actually occurring now which we have, well not necessarily recently, but we've come to understand that can alter the climate. There's a natural change in our climate. It's from Milankovitch cycles. So the Milankovitch cycles have been suggested as reasons for changes or cycles in our climate, which are natural processes down to essentially the, the movement of the Earth around the sun. So the first one relates to eccentricity or the how elliptical the orbit of Earth is. So every 100,000 years, Earth's orbit becomes more elliptical and then it goes more circular. And this cycles about every 100,000 years. What that actually does is it makes your seasons a little bit more extreme and then less extreme. Because when you become more elliptical as the orbit, then you get closer to the sun and further away during one orbital period as it goes around once. So your seasons are going to be a little bit more extreme, then they become less extreme and it cycles about every 100,000 years. The next one is the tilt of Earth's rotation and that cycles between about 22.1 and 24.5 degrees and that's about every 41,000 years. It cycles between that and again it has the effect that it's going to make seasons a little bit more extreme and then less extreme because if you tilt the Earth more or less, it alters how your seasons work. That's essentially where our seasons come from anyway. So if you make it more tilted and less tilted, it's going to make them more and less extreme. You then have precession, and there's two elements to that. The first one on the left here is the actual the rotation axis of the Earth, or the tilt processes about and make, kind of makes a circle. So that processes about, and that happens just under 26,000 years, it cycles. And then on the right, you've got the precession of the orbit itself. So the Earth's orbit is not perfectly circular. There is some ellipticalness to it. And that orbit itself actually processes about the sun as well. And that happens about 112,000 years that occurs. So you've got all these different cycles known as the Milankovitch cycles, which can alter basically the, the season, the climate on the Earth. Now, the, this process here, due to precession, alters when your seasons start. To, they're going to occur at different times. But also, it changes the difference in temperature 
between each hemisphere, so your northern and southern hemisphere, you're going to get greater differences between the temperatures during the seasons there as well, due to the way the tilt work and the precession works. So you get more energy from the sun falling on one hemisphere than the other one. So that's basically what that change is there. So it can have a, an impact on our climate, but they're not catastrophic. And they have somewhat been linked to ice ages, but they're not going to be life ending basically so they're not huge changes now something else that has also been noted to change which was not noted as a Milankovitch cycle necessarily but the inclination of the orbit is thought to cycle every 100,000 years as well so the inclination is the plane of the orbit so most planets are almost in a common plane they're all orbiting kind of in the same sort of direction and then an inclination means that it kind of it's angled a little bit out of that. And this cycles every 100,000 years for Earth as well. So this is another change in its orbit, which relates to the other stuff as well. So what's actually driving those particular cycles? So these cycles we just mentioned are mostly driven by interactions with other planets. So whilst it's dynamically stable, every time the planets pass by each other, they exert a gravitational force. And you've got lots of different planets and they interact with each other. And these interactions, mostly with Jupiter and Saturn for Earth, because they are the biggest planets in our solar system, they can drive some of these cycles. There are also interactions or tides from the Earth, from the moon and the sun, which also drive some of the cycles as well. So it's the interactions with all the other bodies in our solar system, which is thought to drive these particular cycles. So that's what's occurring now. But going forward, what could change Earth's orbit in a more significant manner? Well, in 8 billion years time, the sun is going to swell up into a red giant. It's going to cease hydrogen fusion in its core. It's going to go to the next phase, which means it's going to swell up in size. That means the surface of the sun gets closer to the Earth. Now, the biggest problem with that immediately is going to be the habitable zone. At the moment, we are pretty much banging it. We have liquid water on our surface. We are the right temperature, which is what the habitable zone is. So we sit quite happily in that habitable zone. But when the sun swells into a red giant, that habitable zone moves or migrates outwards, mostly to around Jupiter Saturn sort of area or, or distance, because the surface of the sun is now much so much closer and it's more luminous so it heats the earth up more so the, the earth is no longer habitable at that point but if we're still around in eight billion years time then it will be a really great time to have a look at the moons around jupiter and saturn instead because they actually would become habitable at that point even though they already have liquid water below their frozen surfaces um, but that was what would happen to the, the temperature. The inner planets like Mercury, Venus, they will actually get engulfed by the sun. So they're just gone. They've been destroyed. Earth's oceans and atmosphere are likely going to boil off. It's going to get very hot for Earth. So, again, we're not going to be habitable at this point. But orbit wise, the outer planets are likely going to change their orbits because when the Earth expands into a red giant, the red giant phase signals a fairly significant loss of mass for the sun so it starts to lose a lot of mass due to the way that with the red giant phase works so as it loses mass these outer planets are likely going to go into wider orbits or their orbits at least are going to change so it will alter the orbits of the planets during the red giant phase as well so that was one thing that can occur we know is going to occur in eight billion years time but there are things that can occur before then and afterwards now, in the Milky Way galaxy, which we have here, we are orbiting around the centre. And there's lots of other stars all doing the same thing. So think of it like traffic all on a common road in the same direction. All of these stars are moving in the same direction around in this galaxy. But they do have some random motions. They kind of cross each other's path. They get closer to each other. They move further away. So stars can pass close to the solar system as they're moving around in the galaxy. So this is actually called a stellar flyby. So as these stars fly past the solar system, they exert a gravitational force on objects orbiting the sun. And this occurs for other stars, not just the solar system. And it has the effect of altering orbits of objects that are orbiting 
the sun because there's an external force pulling it out now and that can alter orbits. So it can make the orbits more elliptical because you've got this external gravitational force pulling, it can make them more elliptical. That's one thing that it can do. It can also change the orbital radius, which is the semi-major axis of the orbit. So it can make it go further out. Maybe it can send it inwards. The point is, if you've got a, a complete system there, it actually can change all of them. And then the planets start to interact in different ways. This is important because when we mentioned at the beginning, the solar system is dynamically stable. If you start to alter the orbits of the planets, even just one, then they actually start to exert their own gravitational forces on others, which was not the same as before. That can kind of build up and destabilize and can lead to a planet-planet scattering event. So when these planets get close to each other, they can exert a much larger gravitational force on each other. And when they get so close, you can get a scattering effect, which has the effect of changing their orbits again. So in extreme close encounters between planets, you can completely eject one from the system. And this occurs if your stars are very close. So if a star passed very, very close to the sun, then it's going to alter the planet's orbits. But most likely, they're quite a long way off. So they pass at a reasonably large distance. So there's no catastrophic interaction between the sun or the solar system and an outside star. But they can very slightly alter the orbits, which can then lead to a chain reaction effect where the planets themselves start to interacting and it can destabilise long term. And this has known, it's been noted in research for a reasonable amount of time that this can occur, even very small encounters. So here you actually have the more extended solar system. So you've got the planets quite close to the sun and then you have the Oort cloud further out. And this extends to the outer part of the sun's gravitational influence. And here, because it's a long way from the sun, the sun doesn't have a very large influence gravitationally on them. So anything external moving past has a greater effect on their orbits. And long period comets are, are going to originate from this Oort cloud. It's, it's this spherical structure around the sun comprised most of these kind of comets. And they can get destabilized and sent inwards. So a lot of the long period comets that we see now or have seen in the past have originated from the Oort cloud and have likely been destabilized from stars passing very close or just passing past the solar system. And they've exerted a small gravitational force on these objects, which has slightly knocked their orbits and then sent them inwards. So some of these comets we see, they have originated there because because originate in a, in a solar system because of a stellar flyby from a star. So here, you've actually got this occurring about 70,000 years ago. So you had this red dwarf star and its companion brown dwarf. It's not a particularly very big system, it's quite small actually, but it passed through the outer parts of the Oort cloud. So it actually passed through this outer Oort cloud and that has sent comets to the inner part of the solar system. So some of the long period comets we're seeing now are a direct consequence of this star passing nearby to our solar system. So not only do we know it occurs, this actually occurred relatively, well, not soon, but in a short period of time from where we are now. So it wasn't that long ago this actually occurred. And humans, relatively modern humans, would have seen this star in the sky as it occurred. And this is responsible for some of these long period comets. So the point really to make here is that Earth's orbit can and already does change. But the time scales which these occur on are enormous. So even a stellar flyby that may destabilise orbits is a long way off. And we actually understand the dynamics of the stars nearby to us. And this is unlikely to be a problem in the immediate future. Not a problem for us anyway. So thank you for watching and if you enjoy then check out some of the other videos.